Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to the video of 1.2 Collision Theory. In this video, we will learn how to explain collision theory, define activation energy, explain transition state theory, as well as draw energy profile diagram for interaction. Okay, so what is actually a collision theory, the name of our subtopic itself? So collision theory is the theory to explain the rate of chemical reaction. Okay, so we have learned previously that rate is equal to change in concentration over time. Okay, but then the collision theory uh, is based on two ideas, which is the first one, the molecule must collide to react. So our reactant must collide to form our product. And then, okay, when it collides, the collision involved must be the effective collision. Okay, so that's why here we have rate is directly proportional to effective number of effective collision. Okay, remember, the collision must be effective. If it's not effective, it will form our product. But it is inversely proportional to time. The same goes to the uh, formula of our rate. Lah. Rate change in concentration divided by time. Okay, so when we talk about effective collision, okay, effective collision is actually a collision that leads to the formation of product. And what is the requirement for effective collision? First one is that the molecule must collide at correct orientation. So for example here, when, um, here we have our reactant on the left hand side. So first when it undergoes effective collision, it will form a new product. But then if it's not effective collision, it does not collide at the correct orientation. Uh, so uh, the reactant, as you can see here, the product here is the same as our reactant. So it means that the reaction does not proceed. Uh, it forms our reactant back. Okay, so for example, our um, uh, for this given equation. Okay, so when it is colliding, uh, it col at correct orientation. So A collide at B, then we will get our product A, B plus C here. But then, for example, if our reactant here collide with C, B. Uh, so we won't get lah A, B plus C. So that's why first one, the first requirement is that the molecule must collide at correct orientation. Okay, the second requirement is that the colliding molecule must have total kinetic energy equal to or greater than the activation energy. So it possesses uh, energy, it has energy, but it must be at least equal to or greater than activation energy. So I'm going to denote activation energy as Ea. So what is actually Ea, activation energy? It is the minimum kinetic energy that molecule must possess to initiate the chemical reaction. Okay, to start the chemical reaction, there are actually minimum kinetic energy required. So that is actually our uh, that is our uh, activation energy. So here we have two of our energy profile diagram, which we're gonna look into detail later. Okay, so for example, and so here is our reactant, here is our product. Okay. So, for, before the reactant change the product, it must undergo this one hill. Next, yeah, hill. The same, it's either and exoker and dopant is the same one. But well, before the reactant change the product, it must have energy greater than uh, activation energy lah, equal to or greater. Okay, for example here, if if I have my um, uh, energy, uh, activation energy here, it's actually 50. But then my the uh, the energy of the molecule here is actually forty kilojoule, but here is fifty. Uh, so it does not uh, meet the activation energy, so it can the reaction can proceed. So okay, when we're talking about the collision of the molecule itself, the molecule must have energy greater than activation energy. Okay, so uh, based uh, summary uh, to summarize here, collision theory uh, is actually. Uh, talking about the rate is uh, directly proportional to number of effective collision and the requirement for effective collision is that it must collide at correct orientation and the kinetic uh, and it must have total kinetic energy equal to or greater than activation energy. Okay, now let's look on page 18 about transition state theory. So transition state, so what is transition state? Um, peralihan, uh, fasa Transisi, ya, peralihan lah. Fasa peralihan. So, what is transition state? Uh, transition state is the configuration or the arrangement of atom 
of the cladding species at the time of the collision and the species form uh, is called activated complex okay so from previous equation okay usually when we're given an equation it only show it to you the reactant and the product right before our reactant change to product it will undergo transition state uh, so transition state here this is what we define as activated complex uh, this species this one we call it uh we call it as reactant. This one is product. Okay, this one we call it as activated complex. Okay, specifically uh, look at this equation. Originally we have our CO gas and NO2 gas. Okay, so that is the uh, start one. Okay, at the transition state here it's colliding, and we can see here is my activated complex. All of it is combined. Okay. And then my product, so we can see because here we have our effective collision between our carbon and oxygen. So here oxygen will come to the carbon and this bond will break. Okay, so that's why from CO, originally it's CO, it become CO2. Okay, and our NO2, it become NO because between the carb carbon monoxide and nitrogen dioxide, we have our effective collision. Okay, the highest state. The highest potential energy is what we call the state is transition state. Okay, so but then the specific name for it is activated complex. So let's look here. What is the characteristic of activated complex? It is very unstable and has a short half life. So when it has a short half life, so it means that it decomposes to form product or fall back as reactant. Very unstable and has short half life. So it's either it can't um it can't be at the transition state forever. So it's either go back to my reactant or can form our product. And then that the potential energy is greater than the reactant or the product itself. And for energy profile diagram, uh, the highest state here, uh, the peak of the mountain, <laughs> the peak of the hill here, is what we define it as transition state. Okay, so next what we're going to look at is actually how to draw the energy profile diagram. Okay, for energy profile diagram, what we're going to look at is exothermic reaction and endothermic reaction. So exothermic reaction and endothermic reaction, we can see it uh, detailed in chapter 2, okay, introduction for the energy profile. So for exothermic reaction, it means that heat is released to the surrounding, while for endothermic, it is heat absorbed from the surrounding. Okay, so let's look here, but please uh, write it down in your notes about the EA forward. EA forward means that the activation energy forward, where forward it means that because usually uh, for the equation, it is from our reactant change to product. So if forward, it means that reactant to product, uh, the activation energy, reactant to transition state. For the reverse, it means the product to reactant. So that's why the reverse product is an, uh, until transition state. Okay, And then delta H is activation energy reverse minus activation energy forward. Delta H is what we call enthalpy change. So what is enthalpy? Enthalpy to mean the heat lah. But later we're going to see it uh, in detail in chapter 2. Okay, so based on our learning outcome, we have to learn on how to draw the exo, the energy profile diagram. Okay, so let's look here. So our y-axis is the potential energy uh, and our x-axis is progress of reaction. Or sometimes uh, time pun boleh juga. Okay, so what happened? Okay, at the start of the reaction itself, um, it must be uh, at the start of the reaction. What we have is actually our reactant and the end of our product. At the end, it's actually our product. So here I'm going to write down is my reactant and is this is my product. So we have our reactant and product. Okay, next what we're going to fill in is actually remember about our transition state, uh, the highest state, again okay, before our reactant change to product itself. So here is my transition state. So we have our reactant, our transition state, and our product. Okay, next is actually we do have three more. So what we're gonna fill out, we're gonna fill out by electron uh electron flow. Activation energy forward, reverse, as well as my delta H enthalpy change. Okay, so for my EA forward is actually from reactant to transition state. So from my reactant e to transition state. Okay, so which arrow? Is it the green one, blue one, or the red one? Okay, for the reactant transition state, it's here. 
Okay, so here is my EA forward. And next is EA reverse. So for the EA reverse, is from product to transition state. So we have, here is between reactant and product. So here is between transition state and product. So here is my EA reverse. Uh, the last one, okay, what should we write it down? So here, delta H is EA reverse minus EA forward. Okay, that is the formula for the calculation. Okay, so what we have left is here our delta H. Here is my enthalpy. Uh, enthalpy, or it's fine if you want to just write down it as, label it as delta H. Okay, so this is actually exothermic reaction. Okay, for exothermic reaction, it's heat released to the surrounding. Okay, so what happened here at the start? Uh, at the start of the experiment, okay, when T is equal to zero, the energy is higher lah because heat is is still in the system itself. But once it is released, uh, it is lower. So that's why the shape will be like this. Again, transition state is the highest. EA forward reactant to transition state reverse uh, transition state to product. Okay, and then for this one, uh, for exothermic reaction, delta H will be negative. Okay, so that is actually for my exothermic. Next, let's look for our endothermic. Okay, so for our endothermic, it is heat absorbed from the surrounding. Okay, but uh, the shape will be different. Okay. Because when heat absorbed from the surrounding, at the start of the experiment, I'm kidding, energy is lower lah. Once heat is real, uh, heat is absorbed, it means that the energy will be higher. So that's why here is my product. Okay, so here is my reactant, my product, and don't forget my uh, the highest one, the peak here, transition state. So next, what we're going to look at is between these three. So EA forward reactant to transition state. So here is my transition state. Okay, so here is my reactant. So here will be become my EA forward. EA reverse is where the product change to transition state. So product here, transition state here. So this is my EA reverse. And last but not least, what we have left is actually delta H. And when we count it, what we have is actually delta H is EA reverse minus EA forward. We get a positive value. Okay, so here is just an introduction to draw the exothermic and endothermic reaction. Uh, next, we're going to look at the examples where the value is given, so we have to draw it. So, example 1, for the reaction A plus B equal to C plus D, the enthalpy change is 21 kJ per mole. So, this is my delta H. And then, the activation energy forward is 84 kJ per mole. So, I'm going to extract the information first. This is what I have. But then they ask you to sketch the reaction profile of this reaction. Okay, to sketch the reaction profile of this reaction is either uh, exo or endothermic. Okay, the value given here, okay, before you're gonna draw it, first check whether you have your delta H. Delta H is given, so you can know it straight away, it's a positive, so positive it is endothermic. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna draw this one and then I'm gonna draw my shape here. So this is my shape. We knew that this is my reactant, this is my product, so this is my transition state. But for this given uh, equi uh for this given example, the equation is given to you. So this is my A plus B, here is my C plus D, here is my transition transition state. So this is the reaction profile, but then we have to include as well our EA forward, our EA reverse, and our delta H. So, what we're going to do first is EA forward uh, is the reactant in transition state. So, between the reactant and transition state is what we call our EA forward. Okay, so this uh, next step what we're going to do is actually my EA reverse from my product to my transition state. So, from my product, so here is my product, so here is my transition state. So, I'm going to label it as yang sini pula EA reverse. Next step, what we're going to do, the last one is my delta H. My delta H is actually, is between uh, my product minus reactant. Huh? The other way of looking delta H is product minus reactant. So here is my delta H between our product and reactant here. Okay, so that is actually the uh, reaction profile diagram. Okay, so next is actually 
Uh, the question is, what is the activation energy for the reverse reaction? So how we're gonna do it? So we're gonna calculate using this formula. So there is actually a correction here. So what I have written down is actually delta H is activation energy reverse minus activation energy forward. So it's supposed to be the other way around. Okay, but it's fine. Uh, this is the uh, this is the only time that you're gonna find out using this formula because in chapter two, what we're gonna use is delta H is enthalpy product minus uh, enthalpy of reactants. Okay, so but then here I'm just gonna erase this and gonna substitute or I'm gonna write down the original or the correct formula. Delta H is activation energy forward minus activation energy reverse. So let's do the calculation. So here okay, I'm just gonna use the same formula. So delta H is given here 21. My forward is actually 84. So here what are we get 21 equal to 84 and then minus our activation energy reverse okay so from here when you rearrange it what you will get is actually uh, 63 kilojoule per mole okay, so that is the answer for question b uh, example two i believe you could try yourself but before anything make sure you check uh determine what is my delta h because once you determine delta h then you know whether it's endothermic or exothermic okay so that's it for this video